so I've just been on Soho Radio, Free Seed on Soho, ostensibly to talk about the London Overground film I'm making with Ian Sinclair, but we kind of rambled on and went all over the place with it. Um, it was a lot of fun, and I'm going to put a few minutes of that interview here, and a link below to the whole episode, so you can listen to the whole episode on Soho Radio, Free Seed on Soho. Part life, of course, and before that we had Sun is Shining by the brilliant Bob Marley, and in the studio we have the brilliant John Rogers. Hi. 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 <laughs> How are you? I, well, I'm all right. I'm, I'm not doing too badly at all. Yeah? How's it? I mean, I went... I can't remember when it was now. Unless, you know, I've last had a... Tuesday. It was, a, it was last Tuesday. It was last... It was. Because I was supposed to come on the show last Wednesday, and I you didn't, were. because we, mm. were, we were there uh, showing um, a work in progress. Mm. Like, sort of some rushes, basically, from a film I'm working on. And the next day, mm. we had to go and do the, uh, one of the final shoots, actually. So I, was... I missed the show for a very pertinent reason. Yes. Well, you... good, because I wasn't, I wasn't coming. No, this week. So I, 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 see? Meet me. There you go, a bit of luck. I was going to bring Holly down to that night, but I ended up bringing a friend, Shauna. I was on a shoot. Sorry, because yeah, Holly, Holly was on a shoot, but we watched. I sat, I sat and watched it. I mean, it's, it's, it was interesting. It's a good little theatre that where you did. It's that. amazing. I mean, close up, close up, just close off Brick, up, just off Brick Lane. It's yeah. a great venue. Go mm. and it's more than just a. It's more than just a cinema. It's a little a boutique uh, sort of forty seat mm. cinema, but it's also a, a unique venue in that it's. Um, if you remember, it's a film library of films that you won't really find anywhere else. Yeah, and you can take them out. Right, oh, yeah. but it's an amazing say. collection of films. I mean, I won't do it justice by mm. trying to give a price, but they've got equipment there that you won't find yeah. anywhere else in London, probably old editing mm. machines. They've got um, 35 millimeter projectors, which is becoming an incredibly rare thing. Yeah, to say. Yeah. They've got Super 8 projectors, 16 oh millimeter God, projectors. It's um, an incredible film library, incredible uh, yeah. library of books as well. Mm. Great cafe. Yeah, it's, a book, it's like it's a bookshop, great muffins and <laughs> <laughs> coffee, yeah, yeah. beer. Yeah. Exactly. Both there for the booze. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't know where, I didn't know where it was because. I said, oh, there's a John, you know, the John Rogers thing, and they went, oh yeah, come here, and took me out of the bar, and then downstairs, and then it was an amazing little place. And then we put the put the. I mean, I must admit, like I say, I mean, the talk was very interesting. And then you literally went into the to the film because I've never really seen anything like that before. I thought it was very brave. Oh, which you was did. I uh, no, I did think it was <laughs> yeah, just yeah. as a filmmaker. And you did sort of say beforehand, we're going to show you like what it was like three cuts from a coming documentary. So it was very kind of choice. I mean, not even cuts from the film. Actually, just bits it? I put together for that. Right. Yeah, the film isn't even well. It kind of is now, but it wasn't even at that stage where it, I have a, a timeline of rushes which mm. is currently standing at over three hours yeah so you know what would you do just show bits <laughs> of that but there I've literally just laid out clips that I like so yeah as I thought, well, I can't do that. That's mm. torturous for people. So I have to put together something <laughs> you can show. Yeah. Um, but it was very quickly done. And actually, funny enough, some things came out of that screening where you go, mm. it's certainly, it's, it's a film I'm making with Ian Sinclair based on mm. a book called London Overground. We haven't even done that, actually. Yeah, yeah. So it's a book called London Overground by Ian Sinclair. He's, he's the, probably the great London writer. Right, yeah. You know, he's, yeah. If you're interested in knowing anything about London, mm. you know, okay, you've got the kind of Peter Ackroyd book of London, but that's... Yeah. Uh, and Ian actually goes back a long way with Peter Ackroyd. Right. But Ian's books, for since like the late 60s really. Yeah. Um, so where to start with his work. But this is his most recent book called London Overground, which mm. is, you know, it and, will... and for anyone that doesn't know Ian Sinclair's work, or Ian Sinclair, he is very passionate about what he does because like he yeah. loves London. He knows so much as well. I mean... I love people like that. Yeah. But I love London. Well, John's oh, you'll, love, love, you'll, love yeah. his, you'll love his work. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, and Ian's been someone I've looked up to for, for mm. quite a long time and actually, in, not just as a writer, mm. but, um, you know, he really encouraged me with filmmaking yeah. when I was sort of making stuff on camcorders as well. Mm. And Ian was very influential and really encouraging me to, you know, take the next step, if you like. Yeah. Uh, along with other people, but because um, I didn't realise that. I mean, you know, you know, for what I mean, like I thought it was going to be you talking because, like, you know, this other London, which is your mm. your book, obviously that we, we we talked about the last time you were on the show and stuff. I mean, it's it's you're just filming this, so it's it's, it's your like you say, Ian's very much then a hero of yours. So you're filming, yeah, him doing his thing. That what influenced you? Because uh, I thought it was going to be you talking. Yeah, I thought it was going to be the other way. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. It's it's funny the way it, it's one of those things that just evolved. Um, mm. And I interviewed Ian uh, last summer. Right. Uh, it was probably about this time that when the book came out, mm. I mean, we just met to do an interview because I'd interviewed him before that, uh, October 2014, at the, mm. the, and it, yeah, it did quite well. And we said, oh, let's just do another one for the new book. Yeah. And he said, well, do you fancy doing the walk and you know filming it? And I was like, yeah, you know, I'd love to go for, for a walk with Ian and and film yeah. it. But then you realise, oh, it's 
35 miles. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's quite a long walk to make a yeah. film. It's quite a long walk to walk. Are you talking about the night quite, walk? That's, that's well, a they, really long. Well, he, he did it because the original... The night walk are you talking about the, Well, the night walk, I only did a portion <laughs> of the night walk. He did, but the, book, the walk that he does in the book is he walks around the central circuit of London Overground, yeah. which is 33, I think this is right, 33 stations and 35 miles. And he does it in a single day. Yeah. He's 71, 72 so, years old. Oh, God, yeah, is he yeah. running it? It's um, he, he walks at quite a clip, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> most of the filming's done from behind him. Uh, it's sort of like I'm stalking him, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so he does this walk, and I thought, my, I'm not sure I can walk it. I certainly mm. think walking it and filming it would be impossible. Yeah. But so, because he went, no, no, we'll just do it. So we've just been doing it in bits over there. So it's been a real pleasure to do it. It's been very casual. Yeah. And I almost really at the beginning thought, well, this will be a YouTube video, because I'd started mm. doing regular YouTube videos again, you know, uh, on my own personal channel. I've got a second mm. channel, which has been a bit more high profile, called Drift Report. Yeah. Is that um, still is that still that offshoot thing? Of, uh, it started as an offshoot of Russell Brand's The Trues. It was yeah. basically sort of Trues 2, if you like. But yeah. then that never really is a kind of project to expand the truths into this sort of multi-channel entity never really mm. ever happened right. a number of people were invited to create channels actually mm. and I was the only one that did um, and so that after a while that kind of fell off as a project the truth was just then going to be Russell in his bedroom yeah, doing yeah. his thing um, <laughs> so well, sorry I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, who, yeah. that, that would yeah. anyway, anyway. <laughs> more but, viewers that, yeah, yeah that, but, um, but so, yeah, I just yeah. changed, so I just changed the name and carried on doing it, actually, right. so it didn't really make any difference. But mm. um, also, I've had a YouTube channel for 10 years. I've realised now, I've had a YouTube channel for over 10, 10 years. 10 years? Has it been going that long? Wow. Which is basically as long as YouTube. I mean, YouTube started yeah. October 2005. Right. I started my YouTube channel in January 2006. So you were up on it? It's really funny because I mean I'm immersed in the whole world of YouTube now through my kids, right. and, and it's really funny that there's a big. That if, if you're not interested in this, I mean, have a if you like a bit of gossip. There's a thing called YouTube drama happening at the moment. It's a mm. big thing happening between a lot of the big YouTubers, and it's very it's quite interesting if you're interested mm. in the culture of social media actually, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. importance of social I media. I don't even have YouTube as an app on my phone. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? I'm well, terrible. You need that app. Yeah, I know. Um, there'll be a couple of minutes of this show on them. Oh, my oh. <laughs> but. but um, I can't remember where I was going with the YouTube job. But Sorry, the, yeah, no, you're YouTube, YouTube well, but there's a, there's One of the people, one of the biggest YouTubers, this guy's got like 16 million subscribers, a guy called Markiplier, waded into this YouTube drama thing. Going, like, I, if I know one thing in life, I know th something about YouTube. It's the one thing I'm qualified to, because I've had a YouTube channel for four years now. Right. Go, wow, four yeah. years. <laughs> go, well, I've had a channel for ten years, you know. Well, it's very, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's like, yeah. I mean, like you say, it's so recent. I didn't even think it had been going that long, YouTube. No, I didn't realise either. 2005. I think the big change for YouTube happened when um, Google bought it, which, that's when right. a lot of people think YouTube happened, is, which I think is 2010, 2011. That's when it became that, a commercial. That's when you had channels and you, you got advertising, share advertising right. revenue got, came to people. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, what are you going to do with the film? I mean, more than anything else, because... Um, yeah, after saying we spoke about YouTube projects, didn't we? Um, yes, yeah, sorry. It, so no, in reality, no, in reality it, it's going to be in the East End Film Festival, the wonderful mm. East End Film Festival, which but has supported me from the beginning of kind of my filmmaking career in a way. You know, career. I haven't really <laughs> ever been to the <laughs> East End Film Festival. You when must go it? to the East End Film Festival. Yeah. I mean, God, I was about to say my, it's my favourite film festival and risk alienating all the other film festivals <laughs> I've worked with. Um, it really is a wonderful film festival in the sense of it really has kept the spirit of what I associate with film festivals. Mm. I used to work at the Sydney Film Festival in the 90s right. and lived in Sydney for a few years and and uh, that is a big uh, you know, a yeah. big festival. But it still had this wonderful kind of condensed community feeling to it because Sydney, although it's a city of what, three or four million people, it's a small town really. Yeah. Um, and the festival used to happen in the State Theatre where I used to work so everyone used to like camp out on the steps and it was a kind of real community of people that went to that festival and I, I think the East End Film Festival has still got those links with its community. Mm. They showed the first kind of feature doc I made, the London Perambulator, mm. and that was shown uh, that was shown there 2009 and and really a time when I think I hadn't yeah I hadn't finished the film like this one I hadn't finished it. Mm. And it and Is that I, what you discovered close up that venue? No, that close up's that? quite new. Close up's really oh, new, yeah. 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 And that was one of the they showed that at the Whitechapel Gallery. Right. Oh, wow. oh, right. And we did a panel with Ian actually and Sinclair, oh, right. uh, Will Self, yeah. and, um, and myself. And I was like, first time I'd done anything like that, really. Mm. And it was really gave me a big push. And from that, I don't know how many people go in the White Chapel, about 120. But yeah. from that, that film that film still gets screened, actually. It was filmed, that's, that film was screened at the Cork International Arts oh. Festival <laughs> two weeks ago. <laughs> and it was a film I made on my own, sort of like just in spare time after work to, in 2009. Mm. Um, 
That's the thing. It's still yeah. screening. You know? See, that's, see, great, see that's the thing that you were up on YouTube quite because you like you would say you would think it would be a kind of essentially something that a young person. I'm not saying anyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm forty-five. You know I mean? Okay, let's yeah. just get out. No, no, but I'm just saying you being forty-five and you, I look one hundred and five. You being <laughs> up on that, or up on. I mean, I wasn't up on YouTube. It was something that came came to my attention through like, oh, you can watch this music video on YouTube, or you can watch this on YouTube, and you're like, what's that? But like, straight away, like you're saying, like you've got one of the oldest YouTube oh. channels. I mean, for filmmakers, I suppose it is like a. You know, it's it's a godsend, really. You can put yeah. up, like 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 you were saying, like essentially, you, you, why are you doing these projects? Oh, they can always just be a YouTube project, exactly. You know, yeah. like and it does yeah. it does make you do things that you might not normally kind of get into. Yeah, it just keeps a creative flow going all yeah. the time. It makes people want to do it. So, but but I mean, you're gonna you are gonna edit this into um, a, a, a feature level. Yes, so, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and like I say, we, the East End Film Festival runs from the end of June into early July, so mm. it will be screened then as a as a finished film of about an hour, hour and a quarter. Right. Um, We're going to get tickets. You'll get tickets. Yeah. Of course you get tickets. Of course you get <laughs> yeah, tickets. Yeah, we pay for them. Yeah. No, no, you come back on. Come on. Scratch, scratch your yeah, backs no, here. Come, be... back the, come back on the show. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really, I, I mean, as much as I... I, I love the kind of the the, the user generated model mm. of YouTube. Love that kind of um, the equality of it, mm. uh, equality of access to it. But also, there is something special about screening in a cinema yeah. and having an audience there and meeting the audience. Yeah. And it, 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 I never get over it. Actually, I feel the Q and A system. Yeah, it's yeah. great. I like. Great. I, yeah, I mean, I wanted to. I thought you were going to like I say. I, mean, I was going to ask a question uh, uh, on the Q and A because you nearly went into this warehouse system. I thought we, we were going to go. Yeah, we've got some gripes about that, but then you didn't. <laughs> And I was I was quite fascinated by the whole thing. I don't know what like I said, never seen anything like it um, in terms of like a filmmaker. I no. thought it was brave because I was saying you said before it's terrifying. It, it was, wasn't it? I could see it in oh. your face. I was thinking, yeah, God, I couldn't do it's this. It's terrifying because also yeah, where they go, hey, it's work in progress. I'm, you know, I'm letting yeah. you see this at an early stage. If it's rubbish, people go, it was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> they, they won't go, ah, oh, yeah, I know, but it's work in progress. It'll yeah. be better. But they just yeah. go, oh, that was. So you think, it's, I, it's got to still be, I've got to make this okay at mm. least. No, know. it was really good. It was good. But then uh, if, you're, if you're fascinated by London, then, then this, will, this film would fascinate you anyway. Absolutely. Because it is fascinating to find out you walk over, you walk over pieces of history every day yeah. in London. We did this before, didn't we? Like, yeah. We were saying that you were in this area, Soho, we're in now. East London especially. Because it was East London you concentrated on. Are you going to do... <sighs> Oh, is that in the chat? Can you believe that? Back's the jury ringing me. Say hello. <laughs> You're on air, mate. All right, listen, John. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. That was no, no, uh, back to the jury, people. Back to the jury. Yeah, back yeah, the jury. Yeah. It's oh, on the next show. show. <laughs> He's on the phone. Yeah. Is hello, it, Baxter. Are they, do, is that how they say your time's up? No. <laughs> No, John, look, thanks so much for coming on, man. And um, we're going to check out... Will you let us know when the film's on? Yeah, the film's going to be called London at Overground. It'll be on in the East End Film Festival at the end of June, early July. I don't know yeah. the date yet. Yeah. Uh, check my blog, The Lost Byway, for information right. the on that. Byway. The Lost Byway. Check Byway. The, check the East End Film Festival website. Yeah. And Ian Sinclair's website, it'll be on there, iansinclair.org.uk, yeah. I think it is. And check out Ian Sinclair. If you want to check... And anything about London. And also John Rogers' book as well, This Other London. That's also a great book about, about London and how interesting it is. And thanks so much to John for coming Thank in. You, John. Thanks, Thank for you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks to Joey for ringing up. <laughs> 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 We're going to play it with uh, Howling Wolf.